One problem, one page. All right, so here we go. Yesterday, we still have one more to do in our notes, but then we'll do a couple more practice from the sheet I gave you. And then after the quiz tomorrow, or Friday, we will start our practice test. We'll begin reading. All right. How's that signed, every, signed everybody? All right, so here we go. Remember, what's the first thing you do? Okay, so where are we putting um, the 85? Where's the 85 go? Total number available for production. So this is production, this is finishing. The total for production is 85. You guys gotta read it? And be organized. There are 40 hours available for finishing. 40 available for finishing. So where is the 40 go? Right here. That's the total for finishing. Pro boards require 1.5 hours of production. Pro boards require 1.5 hours of production. And two hours of finishing. Specially require one hour of production and a half an hour of finishing. Profit for a pro is 50. Specialty is 65. Everybody okay with that? Now, we had one like this yesterday. There's no variables in here. There have to be variables because ultimately, don't I need to figure out an X and a Y? So read the question. What am I going to let X stand for and what am I going to let Y stand for? What are the what, what, what am I trying to figure out? Exactly. How many kinds of each board? So X is going to be the number of pro boards, and Y is going to be the number of, what's the other one, specialty boards. Right? That, now all that, is going to allow me to figure out what I'm trying to max or min. Is this a max or a min problem? What am I trying to max? Profit. And how do I calculate the profit? 50x plus 65y, right there. Got to have those variables so you can't do the problem. Now, what are the constraints in this problem? X and y have to both be bigger than zero, for sure. That's automatic, that's not written there. Can I make negative skateboards? No, I'm assuming these are skateboards, right? Yeah. Okay, what else are my constraints? 2x plus 65. Exactly, because the number of hours I spend finishing 
has to be less than 40. That's all the time I have. Last one, 1.5x plus y is less than or equal to 85. Now you can use your calculator here to help you with the arithmetic. These we don't graph because we've already taken that into account with the way we set up our axis system. So now I gotta graph this one. And I'm doing it with intercepts. So if I cover up y, what is x? 20. If I cover up x, what's y? 80. So I think I'll use tens again on this one. I think I'll use tens. You can you can use whatever scale you want, you guys, but those are pretty big numbers, so I think I'm gonna go with 10. So we said um, X was 20, and Y was 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I let X be zero, figure out what Y is. Let Y be zero, figure out what X is. And then I connect those with a straight line and shade it where? Inside. So we've got this triangle right here. Okay, now purple. You might get decimals, don't worry about it. Okay, if I cover up X, Y is 85, that's 80, so 85 is going to be right here, that's 0, 85. And if I cover up Y, what is it? 56.6, so 50, so like right here. shaded underneath again so that purple marker is not trash so what am I what am I looking for where they're both shaded well what happens in this one they don't, cross. They don't that's okay they don't cross but they're still both shaded somewhere right where are they both shaded Aren't they shaded in the original triangle? Yeah. So I'm going to take my big black marker and I'm going to say, okay, there and there and there. Because this is the region where they are both shaded. So I only have three points this time, and my three points are 0, 080, 0, 0, and 20, 0. only use the points that are the corners of the double shaded area. All right, what do I do now? Plug those in right here. So use your calculator, put zero in for X and 80 in for Y. What do we get? What's 65 times 80? What? 5200. 5200. So this one works out to be 5200. Now, what about this one? Yeah, if you don't make any boards, you're not going to make any money. And that's okay because remember, the corners of the polygon will always give you the minimum and the maximum. So obviously the minimum is zero. All right, what happens if you take, that's a thousand, isn't it? So what are you going to advise this factory to do? Make 80 specialty boards? Yeah. All right, so they use whatever pronouns you want. 
they should make 80 specialty boards. pro boards for a profit of $5,200. This is a, an optimization problem. You're trying to find a real-life solution to this factory's question. Mathematical models, as much as I hate to say this, are not perfect. This, and you remember yesterday's problem with the farmer doing the potatoes and the corn? There is a kind of a potential problem with doing all of one and none of the other. Can you think of, this is going to make this factory the most money, hands down. But can you think of a potential problem over time if all they do is build specialty boards? There are people who want the other kind, and if these guys are selling them, they're gonna lose those customers. And if they're manufacturing them, they're gonna lose the stores that bought them from them before. So you wanna be careful when it's all or nothing. Um, that's the mathematics, that's what the math says. But in the real world, you might want to be careful with that. Okay. Let's get that paper I gave you, that little tiny thin little packet. Just some extra problems. The first one talks about an automotive plant in Rockaway. And we're going to do as many of these as we can. one from this packet and then you'll work on your homework together because your homework has a little bit of a twist to it. All right, here we go. The automotive plant, all right, so I'm going to set up my chart. You start filling in the numbers. We're doing the automotive problem. This is a brand new set of papers I've never done before this problem. So I'm hoping it works out. We're going to find out. All right, I have to put the 1200 somewhere. Where does the 1200 go? Olivia, I just handed this out. I'm not sure what you're looking for, sweetie. I'm not going to find it back there. Did I not give you one? I don't have one. Where am I going to put the 1200? Total number. Total number. That's all I can make, guys. So however many topazes and mustangs I make, that's it. 1200 is the most. During the spring, the dealer orders up to 600 topaz and 800 mustangs each week. This is the first time this has happened to us, but it happens actually quite frequently. What does it mean when it says he can order up to 600 topazes? That's the max carry Okay, but it's not... He's not made, he's not buying 600 necessarily. He's buying anything from zero up to 600. That's called a fixed interval. I'm going to let X be the number of Topaz cars, and then my X is going to be in between zero and 600. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I'm going to put already horses on there because it could be 600. So what, this, what it means when it says fixed interval, and I will put that in the chart if it's a fixed interval problem, it means you have limitations at the bottom and the top 
for that particular item. So what's the fixed interval for Mustangs? Well, zero, well, I'll call that Y, 800. So if you see a chart that has fixed interval written there, that means somewhere in the problem you have a minimum and a maximum number of that item. Okay, where does the 500 go? Profit for Topaz, and then 800 for a Mustang. Now, is every number in the problem? Yep. And you're thinking to yourself, if there's both of them, yep, it's okay. It's okay. What am I trying to maximize or minimize? Profit. Profit. And how do I calculate my profit? 500x. X plus Y has to be less than or equal to 1,200. They can't make more than 1,200. And then your fixed intervals are always constraints. So 0 less than X less than 600 and 0 less than Y less than 800. So if it's a fixed interval, it's automatically going to be a constraint. You're not writing equations across here because that's not complete. Remember, constraints come from complete rows or from fixed interval. This is a little bit different, but there really are a lot of problems like this. Okay? Now, let's graph it. The first one is easy. We've done this before. Cover up at X, we get 1,200. Uh, maybe with numbers this size, we should use 100 for our scale. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 1,200. And the same for X. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
between. This is getting really messy. All right, so now I have to figure out where am I all three colors? So let's see. I'm going to put a dot there, a dot there, a dot there, a dot here, and a dot here. Check it out. Does that look about like what you have? Kind of a, uh, what do I want to say? I don't know what shape that is, but does it look kind of like that? start panicking. These dots are going to be really easy to find. This one you already know. I need all this. This one is 0, 800. This one is 0, 0. This one is 600, 0. Now, look where I'm pointing right here. This is where my colors come in handy. That point is my purple and my red, right? That purple line has an X value of 600. That purple point has an X value of 600. On my red line, if X is 600, what is Y? 600. So that's the point 600, 600. I don't even need to do substitution and elimination, although you could, because if it's on a vertical line, you know what its X is. The X of that point is 600. It's on the red line, which says they add up to 1,200, so it's gotta be 600. Now, I can do the same thing with this one. This is the intersection of orange and red. Well, what do I know about orange? Anything on the orange has a Y of 800, and anything on the red adds up to 1,200. So if Y is 800, then X has to be 400. You guys can figure that out. I have confidence in you. You just have to think for a second. All right, what happens now? I'm going to use my calculator to help me, and I'm going to plug in each of those points. So no topazes and 800 Mustangs. It's going to be a big number. 640,000. Uh, 640, yep. Oh, there. I did 500x plus 800y. Oh, my bad, because I forgot to multiply by zero. Okay, all right. Zero is going to be zero. No, no money. What is 600 topazes? Is that 300,000? Is that right? 500 times 600. And then what about 600 of each? So 500 times 600 plus 800 times 600. That might be a winner. Oh, maybe not. This one's going to be big too. What, what is that? Okay, guys, you got the calculators. I don't. I need you to take 500 times X plus 800 times Y. This is not hard. Do it. And someone be brave enough to tell me what the calculator says. Oh, 780,000. 780,000. All right. Last one. 400 goes in for X. 800 goes in for Y. What is that one? 840,000. 840,000.
So, what's the verdict now? Remember, don't lose sight of what we were supposed to be doing. So, let's tell these guys how many cars to pay. What are we going to tell them? He should make 400 topaz and 800 mustangs for a profit of that big number, $840,000. to be freaked out about these fixed intervals. They're really easy. They're vertical and horizontal. And you'll know when you have one because I will literally put it into the pro into the chart. Okay? So here we go. My uh, chart's down at the bottom for this. You've got vitamin A. You've got vitamin C. We have cost per pill. We have brand X, brand Y, and minimum. So this should take care of every number in the problem. So here we go. Jameson need, needs four milligrams of vitamin A and 125 milligrams of vitamin C. So stop right there. Where does the four go? Where does the 125 go? Vitamin A, minimum need, is four and vitamin C minimum need is 125. Brand X, brand X, this is brand X, gives us two A's and 25 C's. Brand Y gives us one A and 50 C's. Gotta be organized. X numbers go in the X column, Y numbers go in the Y column. Uh, how many pills of each kind should he take to meet the minimum requirement in the most economical way possible? Brand X costs six cents a pill. Now, we're up at six here, right? Now, I don't care if you put six or .06. That's your personal preference, but just know and if you put six, when we get to the end, our answer is going to be in cents. If you put 06, it's going to be in dollars. Okay? So what do you want to do? I don't care. Let's do 0.06. And this one then would be 0.08. <coughs> now, a couple of things make this problem a little different. For the first time, we are not maximizing. We are minimizing. Now that doesn't change a thing in how we do the problem, but do you understand why it's a minimum? What are we trying to do? We're trying to be minimum cost. And how do we calculate cost? 0.06 for every X pill. And 0.08 for every Y pill. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And we want to minimize that. Now, what are my constraints? We're going to have a little bit of a difference here, too. What are my 2x constraints? plus Y. 2x plus Y is greater than or equal to 4. Why is it greater than this time? He needs at least, that's the minimum, 
four milligrams is the minimum. So that means he has to take at least that much, which means he takes four or more. So this is a greater than, which means when I shade it, I will be shading above. All right, what's this constraint? Exactly. And then do we still have our X and Y are positive? Yeah, because you can't take negative pills. Right? Everything's positive. All right, here we go. I cover up X, Y is going to be four. And if I cover up Y, X is going to be two. There's my nice straight line, but this time I am shading out. So it's not the triangle, it's all of this. So it's right here. I need your calculator to help you. If I cover up X, what's Y? shaded out again so it's all out here so this time the feasible region is all this out here would you agree with that So my points are going to be 0, 4, 5, 0, and then this one, which I'm going to find how, substitution or elimination of red and purple, so 2x plus y equals 4, and 25x plus 50y equals 125. So these two equations, I'm going to substitute or eliminate. Uh, I guess I'll multiply this one by negative 50. choose to eliminate or substitute or use Kramer's rule on that, whatever you know you want. I eliminate it. Anybody else get one comma two? Mm -hmm. okay. Alright, so what happens next? Right. I'm not ready to write my sentence yet. What do I have to figure out? Uh, I figure out what the answer is. And how do I figure out what the answer is? Plug those in to the cost. So here's the deal, guys. This means that he shouldn't take any of this, and he should take four pills of this. Well, if he doesn't take any X's and he takes four Y's, how much is it going to cost him? For me, two cents, right? Well, what if he takes five X's and no Y's? 5x's and no y's would be 30 cents. What if he takes 1x and 2y's? 1x would be 0.06 and 2y's would be 0.22. All of 
these options are going to meet his nutritional needs, which one's going to be the cheapest, that is most economical, he should say. <coughs> One X pill and two, right? Yeah, two Y pills <coughs> for a cost of twenty-two cents. <coughs> okay, so two things different about that problem. When you read it, understand these are not always less than. Sometimes they're greater than you have to read the question. Also, this is a case where we wanted to minimize, not maximize. Okay? All right. Let's get that practice packet out and let's at least get a chart filled in for the next problem, which is Sean painting. You do not need to turn it in. Everybody uh, who is here at present is going to get credit for that homework, so you don't need to turn that in. No, nope, we're back in our, we're going to do a little more linear programming. So that whole packet bag that still has Mustangs in it. The problem we just did with the cars. Playhouses and sheds. Huh? We're not going to get this done, but let's at least get it set up. Okay? Sean has 20 days to paint as many playhouses and sheds as he is able. Where does the 20 go? Total number. Um, it's it's kind of confusing. It's, let's read the next sentence. The sheds can be painted at a rate of 2.5 per day. So days is a rate. So his total, whatever he, however fast he paints, he's got a total of 20 days to get it done. And every shed is two and a half days, and every playhouse is two. So take a look at that and make sure that gels in your mind. It's a little confusing. The paint rate is per day. All right, uh, he has 45 structures that need to be painted. Structures is 45. Down later in the problem, the ABCD part, it says the profit is $26 a shed and $30 for a playhouse. That's every number, right? So what am I going to put here? X, Y. X and Y. How many, how many, what's the number of playhouses, what's the number of sheds? What am I, am I maxing or minning, and what am I maxing? I'm maximizing, I wrote here income, that profit's fine, I'm maximizing my income, which is 30X plus 26 one. constraints. X plus Y is less than or equal to 45. X plus Y is less than or equal to 45. Everybody agree with the less than or equal part of that? Because you can't go more than 45. All right, what else? 2X plus 2.5Y less than or equal to 20 because he's only got 20 days to get it done. sheds are not negative, so there are constraints. All right, I'm going to stop there. Um, what you will do next, if you're going to finish this, which that's on you if you want to, if you want to finish this, what will you do?
Whack them. Shade them. Find your points. Draw your hands to this. And the big one with it. All right, you're starting to get the hang of that a little bit. There are some little tricky pieces to it, but it's not too bad.